My Wi-Fi hasn't been working for a week, the provider doesn't seem to care, a recent attempt to install vanilla OS messed up my main PC, and to make things even worse, I thought of reviewing some of the weirdest operating systems out in the market. Starting from weird, to strange, and all the way up to crazy. And let's see if we can get 200 likes in this video, then I'll release a part 2 version. Trying out the most requested weird operating system in the comments down below. Okay, so let us begin our hunt. Weird OS list. Of course, Temple OS is there. A biblical themed lightweight operating system designed to be the third temple prophesied in the Bible. Apparently, it was a message from God written in a language called Holy C. 8 bit ASCII display, 640 by 480 max resolution. It also comes with a flight simulator. Okay, I'm getting this. Next we have Collapse OS. Someone actually thought of making an operating system which the survivors can use after an apocalypse. Turns out scraping together hardware from junk does not provide a lot of power, so this was invented by Dupress. This project now lives inside another operating system named DuskOS, meant for fairly modern hardware. Its primary purpose to be maximally useful during the first stage of civilizational collapse. This is interesting. Next we have this. Turns out the name comes from the fact if you run a single wrong command which the system does not recognize, you risk wiping out the entire hard drive. PC Mac describes it as a game of Russian roulette where your typing accuracy is the trigger. Definitely trying this. Okay, I think it is enough from PC Mac already. We can try something else. Uh, I think AI can help us here. Weird OS to review. Okay, we have Colibri OS. I will try this anyway because I still remember my initial days uh, trying out Linux and stumbling upon this. Okay, there's something called Haiku OS. Uh, let us see what it is. Haiku OS. Okay, it reminds me of the classic interface era. It is meant to be binary compatible with BOS. What is Steve Jobs doing here? Okay, I'm trying this. Mm, we have React OS. It is a project uh, meant to replace Windows with an open source alternative. I won't particularly call this weird, but 109 MB is claiming to replace Windows? Interesting. Okay, I think that is all. We have all the ISO images. Let us get going. Okay, we have started the boot. Let's go ahead with the default installation. It looks like I'm trying to install Windows 3. Reboot. React has a very classic and vintage outlook. I really love this, but then you realize there are certain text readability issues in the long run. Okay, so it does some initial setup. It looks much like Windows 7 Basic with the classic theme applied. It was my first laptop. One disclaimer I would like to put here is that it's not similar to Linux FX or any other Linux distro. It uses a different kernel which makes this interesting, which is Reactor's kernel written from scratch to mimic Windows interface. Whereas Linux FX takes Ubuntu and slaps wine upon it. Okay, you even get different themes to choose from. Mizu is the one looking most modern out of them, but I guess I will stick to a classic for this video. Okay, all done. React also comes with its own application manager. Okay, mm, while it downloads all the list, let us set the resolution since it doesn't look quite right. Okay, we have a control panel like that of Windows. They even give a slider for changing the display resolutions. Somewhere on Instagram, I noticed this meme where there was a, a slider for entering your mobile number. Uh, some people have the funniest of imaginations. Well, I've set the correct resolution and I think it takes a toll on the performance. I'll speed things up. I mean, moving the control panel looks like this. Okay, let us install a web browser to actually download some modern apps for testing. Firefox is available. Now, it will take some time to download since my internet connection again, I told you, it is not at a good condition right now. So it's better to test some other features while uh, it downloads. Like I mentioned before, you can change the theme under display settings. Now we can go for a modern style. Okay, there's even a dark or light mode option. Although colors are not well defined and apps do not switch to completely dark mode, but just the title bar changes the color. Okay, back to the light mode and we have Firefox downloaded now. The installation looks like a very typical Windows install because it is literally an .exe file which is a Windows executable. Turns out the version of the Firefox available on their store is pretty old and outdated so I thought maybe the modern version of Chrome can be installed. But again, the compatible version is pretty old. I even thought of giving OBS a try because I knew I'm going to get the modern version instead of some old version of Chrome or Firefox like we received previously. Chrome install was fast and smooth, uh, although the version is quite old again. The OBS package which downloaded successfully also failed to install for Windows being outdated. Uh, React is a pretty interesting OS. It's still under development, still in alpha, but they are doing a great job. I don't really see a future, even if there was a possible future, I'm sure Microsoft would not be sitting around quite and not stop React OS somewhere. 
So yeah, it's a nice experiment as of now. Okay, next we have Colibri OS and sized around 100 MBs, this operating system seriously has a lot to offer. It literally boots within seconds and you get almost everything like a text editor, apps for development, some cool games, all separated accordingly on the desktop. What is even more interesting is that they have a pretty good implementation of customization features. You can edit the taskbar, add a dock, set it to auto hide, remove the taskbar or even change the applied theme to something else which looks fairly more Modern. And there are a large number of themes from which you can select and you can even customize the theme accordingly. You also get a separate software section which even contains more software stuff. For example, you get a calculator plus, uh, although you already have a calculator. You also get an icon editor to design your own masterpiece icon. It has this uh, screen grab kind of tool, I have no idea what it is meant to do and there are also some nice 3D models. The games work fine, there is Tetris, Mines, Pong, although it's a bit slow and confusing and a lot more. And if you complain that these are all easy games, try the Flappy Bird. I've been playing it all day and I have become a complete pro, let me show you. Okay, um, you also get a complete web browser here which handles web pages in a very interesting way like removing the search bar from Google or giving you a panic attack that your system got infected when you try to open YouTube. They also could do a little bit of work for the design of the boot page. It literally feels like Windows 7 showing a BSOD or a boot failure. Okay, now things are starting to get weird. Haiku might look like any other operating system, but it comes from a very different design principle, which is the BOS. I don't really know how it plays for a long-term GNOME and Windows user, but I really find it weird. For starters, I thought the live version of Haiku did not have much features or access to all the apps, but it turns out this little widget on the top right corner of the screen holds the key to the entire application directory. Another particularly weird way to access all the apps is through the right click menu on the desktop and who would have known that the apps are hidden inside a sub menu under the desktop menu option. I can really get into the core ideas like modularity and more of the operating system but let us keep this approach simple since we still have more reviews left. I did have to fix the resolution myself, not that I was expecting it to fix on its own, but full HD resolution even with some decent hardware allocation leads to a significant performance drop. So I had to switch to a color mode which is a lot lighter for the system. The image quality does reduce a little bit but at least it is smooth. Okay, there's something related to a panel or a dock, it's like a floating dock without an app menu. Among the apps, you again get an icon designer, so my fellow designers just pick an operating system from this list, I'm pretty sure there's an icon maker somewhere inside it. Okay, I don't know how to use this. Nothing works. We even get a web browser, which thankfully works, unlike the previous operating system. It's getting weird, but at least it is functional. Let us see if we can open YouTube. Okay, that too works. Haiku probably keeps their browser updated since I did not encounter any warning that I need to switch to a different browser in order to surf the web. It also has its own little task manager and the CPU update frequency is insane. I do find their terminal interesting. Many of the commands present are relatable. I mean, they too exist on Linux. The same thing happened in Colibri. I don't think it is a coincidence. Might be they are related somehow in some way. Okay, I think that is enough for Haiku because we still have other OS left. Now it is time to try an operating system which we are going to use when disaster strikes. Okay, I currently have an installation of Rocky Linux here and I need to get the image of DuskOS. So I'll just search for DuskOS. Dusk is actually not available as ISO, I think you get it as a tarball. Their website also leaves this note that the contents of this web page is also served by or through DuskOS. Okay, here we have the tarball and I had already downloaded it, but anyway, I'll download it again. Okay, so let's go for the v3 pre2 version. Okay, just extract all the files here. And a disclaimer, Dusk actually runs uh, inside its own VM, inside a POSIX enabled environment like that of Linux or Mac. Let's open in terminal and if we just write make run, it does all the work for me and as you can see, we have booted inside Dusk OS. 
Currently, it's using 70 KB and 31 MB is free. Last time, it was 69 KB, so missed by a single digit. So you can get the entire list of all the commands easily by typing words. So it gives you the extensive list and you can do all these operations from here. I was actually reading in a website. Let me see if it is available inside my history. Okay, here we have the entire getting started guide for DustQuest. As you can see, this. So if we type 2, 3, plus, oh, we need a dot and it gives you the answer which is 5. And there are also other commands which you can try. This web page gives you a basic idea of the stuff you can do with Dusk, so you can definitely go and check it out. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, let's go to the next operating system for review. This might look like a very normal version of Zorin OS, whose live version is booted, but if you try to open the terminal, you will notice a warning over here, so you understand what we are trying to do. And so let us try certain commands and check it out. I have used this previously and it actually fails to remove all the files when you type something wrong. And I noticed just right now there is a typo in the word Linux. But anyway, so let's try to create a folder. So mkdir sample, it works. So let us try and change the directory inside the created folder. Okay that is great we did it and let's create another folder which we will be trying to delete so mkdir del and as you can see we have del created but if i try to remove del without the r flag it will lead to some issues so as you can see it gives an error telling that you cannot remove del because it is a directory and to remove it you need to use the r flag so rmr del and it is done properly as you can see the sample directory is empty so if we do something wrong while typing a command i think that does not lead to any problem now let me try and change directory into dell since it is deleted it should throw in another error so let's check it out okay it also does not cause any problem okay let us see if we have neofetch installed and it starts the process of removal but as you can see in most of the cases over here that it does not give the permission for the removal i think it is because that zorin is currently booted from an iso so it's uh, not getting the permission for removing all the system files might be that is the reason or something else but even when started inside sudo it does not get the permission to remove all the files but whatever it does initially it already damages your system beyond repair so if you try to open the terminal it won't launch the terminal doesn't launch at least the software center works but if you try and install something else for example console it also won't launch so it deletes a large chunk of your data and if you try and launch the file manager, you will be able to see the number of files deleted. But sadly, it isn't possible right now, as you can see. Okay, now it is time for the number one, TempleOS. Okay, let us boot. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling that Christianity is weird in any way. I've myself studied in a convent. Wait, it has booted. What is going on? It is like marquee behavior in HTML applied all over the place. Where do I focus? Did you notice the mouse? It is so weird. It's asking if I want to use the live version. It even asks if I want help. No, thank you. I might get lost inside the help section. Wait, we already have a panel open to give you some info. We even have God words, passage, song or doodle to display instantly with the key combinations. God doodle brings this page up. When you press the space button here, you get this text and the cursor automatically moves to specific areas while you scroll. Okay, let us press OK. Okay, I need to keep on pressing the space button in order to do this. Press escape to insert. Okay, well, do this. Okay, now let us check out the games. Control M brings up the menu. Wow, we have a ton of games to choose from. We even have a racing game with an apt background music. Even after the game is over, the car keeps on moving. A very good example of inertia. There's another game called Bomber Golf. Then we have Rawhide where you need to chase all the cattle inside the fence area while a really annoying music plays in the background. And there are all sorts of games, fun games, unfun games, and even non-games which include a music composer. Now all of these might seem like funny and weird, but think about this for a moment. The amount of time, effort, and energy a project like this requires for one person to do it all alone. 